Sri Ramakrishna says, but one cannot realize God without renouncing lust and gold. Now here, in this dialogue, you can see Sri Ramakrishna is being quite strict throughout, uncompromising. What is going on here in, in the gospel in Kathamrita is often the subtext, something is going on underneath it. Often you will find Sri Ramakrishna says, of course, everybody can realize God. People come and say, do you have to renounce everything and become monks to realize God? And Sri Ramakrishna says, no. The moon, uncle moon is everybody's uncle. Chanda mama, shawai kar mama. <laughs> so uh, you can stay at home and you are married and you have a job and children and family and all. And you can do sadhana and realize God. Then he told, an, uh, told a story that Rama, this is from Yoga Vashishta. Rama wanted to give up everything. After learning Vedanta, he wanted to give up everything and become a monk. And Dasharatha was worried. Who will be the king? And you see the tragedy of it. That he wants Rama to be the king and then finally he exiled Rama to, away from the kingdom. And Rama did become the king. But by that time, Dasharatha had long ago passed away. Anyhow, so he asks Vashishta, please convince the prince to stay and do his duty. You have taught all this Vedanta and everything. Now he wants to become a monk and go away. So what will happen to the kingdom? And then Vashishta goes to Ramachandra and says, um, all right, you may re renounce the world. You want to realize God. All right, you may renounce the world and realize God. But Vashishta knows the secret that Ramachandra is none other than incarnation of Vishnu, avatar. So there's a purpose. So Vashishta says to him, but you want to renounce the world. Convince me first that the world is something other than Brahman. There is God, ultimate reality, and this world is something different from that reality. In that case, you may renounce it. I have no more um, objection. What does that mean? It means, the Rama, you're making a mistake. What you are trying to renounce here is the same reality. It's uh, like this. If somebody says that I have uh, golden ornaments, you know, I like, I'm very attached to the ornaments, a necklace, ring, bracelet and somebody comes and tells me but the necklace is not the reality gold is the reality ring is not the reality gold is the reality uh, bracelet is not the bangle is not the reality gold is the reality and then I suppose i misunderstand i say oh the ornaments are not real gold is real throw away the ornaments i shall find gold you're making a big mistake because that uh, gold is right there in, that or in those ornaments and equally in all of the ornaments. I was in Fiji many years ago. It was in about 10 years, nine years ago. And uh, I was I'm going to give an, a talk to an audience, uh, mostly Indians in that audience, almost all. And then I was going to talk about Vedanta. So the Swami there at that time he was a little worried. He said, um, you give examples, all right, um, so that they will understand what Vedanta is. I said, yes, yes, I will give examples. Then he became even more worried. And then he came and before I got on the stage, he told me, whispered, don't give the example of that goat. <laughs> Why? So there's what particular example he meant was Sri Ramakrishna's story of the goldsmith, the fraudulent goldsmith. The, thing, the reason he told me this was the audience was mostly goldsmiths. <laughs> they are a community of jewelers who had gone and settled down in Fiji. A very prosperous, wealthy community. Now, what is that story? That story is that um, how people cheat in the name of religion. So a man goes to a jewelry shop. And um, um, uh, uh, so as he's entering the jewelry shop, he finds somebody sitting outside using a japa mala, doing japa. From inside comes the um, uh, call, you know, Keshava, Keshava. Keshava means Krishna. And then um, this man sitting outside the shop said, Gopala, Gopala, Krishna. And from inside came the call, Hari, Hari. And this from outside came the reply, Hara, Hara. And this man who's customer who's entering thought, what a wonderful, this, this shopkeepers are so devout. This is the best place. I will take, I will go and uh, buy my jewels from here. 
but he did not know. It was a code language. From inside, the shopkeeper is asking the person outside, who's a lookout? Yeah. He's asking. They are all con men. So he's asking from inside. Keshav, Keshav. In Bengal, Bengali, Keshav. Keshav. Who, who are they? Who are, who's coming? And give me an evaluation. Is it an in, innocent, uh, simple person? And from outside, that man replied, Gopala, Gopala. Gopala means a herd of cows. These people are as simple as cows. Foolish. Then from inside came the question, Hari, Hari. A harana in Sanskrit means to, to steal. So, Hari, hari means uh, a haran kori. <laughs> should, I, should I cheat them? Are they good? Can be exploited? And the man outside says, Hara, Hara. Yes, yes, go on. Cheat, cheat, cheat. This was the actual conversation going on. They were not at all good people, although they seemed to be taking the name of God. In the name of God, a lot of people cheat because often what happens is um, people who are otherwise very intelligent in the world, highly educated, very accomplished in the field of religion, suddenly turn out to be babies. Suddenly, gullible. Sometimes suddenly very enthusiastic about religion, spirituality. and Anything and everything they are willing to swallow in the name of religion. That should not be. Common sense should be applied. You have uh, built up a life, an education, you have uh, held, uh, built up a career, you trained in science and rational thinking. Apply the same thing here. Rules of good conduct, morality, all those things should be applied. So anyway, that was the story of the fraudulent goldsmiths. The Swami was worried, I will tell that example, because the audience, they are all, all goldsmiths. So I said, no, no, I know. I have got common sense. I will not tell that, that story. So I told them this example of the bangle and the necklace and the, go uh, and the, uh, and the uh, ring and the gold is the common reality behind all of them. After the talk, um, there was little tea. One gentleman came up and he said, Are Swamiji, you are trying to ruin our business, Swamiji. I said, how? He said, that is our business. In your example, you said it is all the same, the same gold. But we charge for melting the gold down into converting this in the neck and ring into a necklace and necklace into a bangle. And that's our business. <laughs> and you are saying the, the, this, uh, these ornaments are nothing but name and form. The reality is gold alone. <laughs> but it is true. In all those ornaments, it's the same gold. If I throw away the ornaments uh, and I say, I will try to find the gold. I'm missing the mark because I have not understood what gold is. There's another similar story. A goldsmith, uh, he told his son, son, I need some gold. Go to the vault. Yesterday I showed you there is a vault. Open the vault and get some gold for me, for the work I'm going to do. So the boy ran off. Then he came back and said, father, there is no gold. He was alarmed. What do you mean? Last night I showed you there so much gold was there. No, no, there's no gold. And so the goldsmith got very worried. He went into the house and opened the vault. He said, here it is. Why did you say there's no gold? Where? Here, this necklace, this bangle, this ring. And the boy said, but this is necklace, bangle, ring. Where is the gold? So he does not recognize it. That is the problem. We also don't recognize it. See, when all the mystics say, here is God all around us, we look, where, where? I don't see God anywhere. <laughs> Our Swami Suvirananji Maharaj, who is the General Secretary of our order, he told a story about Swami Nirvanananji, who was the Vice President of the Ramakrishna Martin Mission, disciple of, um, actually he was a sevak for Swami Brahmananda. And Swami Brahmananda, before he passed, he blessed all, all around him, the last day of his life, and he blessed Nirvanananda. He has served me uh, diligently. I bless you that you will realize Brahman in this very life. Later people used to ask, have you realized Brahman? And he, he said that, yes, I have. Now, Swami Suvirananda, who is now our general secretary, he was a young brahmachari. He's a disciple of Swami Nirvananda. So he told us this story. He was a young brahmachari at that time, uh, many, many years ago. And he was sitting in the room where Swami Nirvanananda was, sitting there in the uh, chair. Very old Swami. At that time, he was vice president of Ramakrishna Mission. And uh, Swami Nirvanananda um, suddenly said to this young man, what do you see there? And Suiranji said, I told him, there is a bed, cart. Bed? 
What do you see there? Table. Table. And then under the bed, trunk. You know, in India, we used to have these uh, iron, big, huge uh, suitcases, like uh, made of iron. Trunk. Trunk. Bed. Table. Trunk. How many years have you been? In uh, How many years have you become a sadhu? So Viranji said, three years. Three years. Are you saying it's bed, table, trunk? As he started shouting. And then a senior Swami who was the uh, Gan, Gan Maharaj, he was the Sevak for uh, Nirvana. He came running up, thought that Brahmachari may have made some mistake. So what happened, Maharaj? Look at this um, uh, young man. He says he has been a sadhu for three years and he cannot see. Sarva Vyapi, Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna pervading everything. He can't see Sri Ramakrishna here. He's saying it's a bed. He's saying it's a table. He's saying it's a trunk. And then... Uh, of course, the attendant Swami knew the ways of Nirvanandaji, so he said to calm him down, No, Maharaj, it will take little time, taking a little bit of time. He will see God everywhere soon. Don't worry. And the Nirvanandaji was very worried. Three years he has been a sadhu. He has not seen God everywhere. So they were that impatient. To see God in everything. Um, Swami Vivekananda says, he who runs away to meditate and die in a Himalayan cave has missed the way. He who plunges headlong into the vanities of the world has missed the way. If you run away from the world, you have missed the way. If you plunge into the world, you have missed the way. Then what is the way? There are only two alternatives. Then Swamiji says, Swami Vivekananda, he says, the way is to divinize life, is to defy life, to see God in everything and everyone you are with, all around you, here and there. Sri Ramakrishna also used to say, the one who sees it here will see it there. One who does not see it here will not see it there also. So this is what Vashishta says to Ramachandra. Oh Rama, you may renounce the world. If you want to renounce the world, all right, renounce. But can you show me that the world is other than God? It's outside God. There's no God here. Throw away the gold ornament, the ornaments. Then try to find gold. You will not because you have not recognized gold. If you recognize what is God, a gold, if you recognize what is God, then you will find it everywhere. Then you will not say, I have to renounce the world. Another beautiful story from the Yoga Varshishta Ramayana. I remember this. Um, the two stages of enlightenment. There was a queen and a king. The queen was enlightened, the Brahma Gyani. After some days, some years of happy, happily married royal life, like, what? not like Prince Harry and uh, Meghan, not like that. Happily married, royal life. And the king asked the queen. The king asked the queen. So in our Santa Barbara ashram in Southern California, so Prince Harry and um, Meghan Markle, they live nearby. So, they, so I asked them, oh, I see. So there's celebrities. Don't people uh, bother them? And the Mataji was there. Yes, I often see Harry walking the dogs. But no, people don't bother them there. After a few years of happily married life, the king asked the queen one day, My dear, I have a question. What is the question? In the midst of your busy schedule, first lady, so busy schedule, how are you so calm, so relaxed, always smiling and serene and calm? How is it possible? Then she said, Ah, I was waiting for you to ask this question. Well, I'll tell you. Actually, we are... We are not who we think we are, and not the body, not the mind. Uh, we are the witness of the mind, the ever pure, ever calm awareness, pure consciousness, and the Chidananda Rupa Shivoham, that teaching, not the body, not the mind. She taught that. And the king said, Oh, such a great secret, such a wonderful thing. I did not know this. I must realize it. So I'm taking a study leave, sabbatical. She, she, I say, you, my dear, you run the kingdom. I'm going to the forest, I will meditate. Of course, there also he has a palace, of course. So there he will sit in the palace and meditate there and realize that he is Brahman, that I am the witness consciousness, ever pure, ever calm Atman, and get that peace which his wife, the queen, already has. So he goes away. And yes. And then he meditates there. After some few months, he becomes enlightened. I am the witness consciousness. Now I realize I am not body, not mind. Uh, 
this world is like a you know, drishya, it's an appearance, an awareness. All changes, all problems, all in the world, they are all appearing, but I am completely at peace, good. He remained immersed in samadhi, in deep meditation. Then he came back to the kingdom and he said, my dear, thank you very much. You have taught me this great secret. Now I have attained peace. But I have one more doubt. Then the queen said, what doubt? You know this. Long before me, you knew this. And you became enlightened. And so you have got this, this great joy and peace in the Atman. Why, why don't you want to remain in the forest and immersed in, in meditation? But you are leading a very ordinary life. Ordinary life means life of the queen. But ordinary uh, queen's life, you know, the first lady, all the work you are doing. I don't see that you are remaining immersed in samadhi. I always want to remain immersed in this. See, like Narayan asked Sri Ramakrishna. After attaining Nirvikalpa Samadhi, Sri Ramakrishna asked, now what else do you want? I want to remain in that. Once in a while, I'll come out and take a snack and go back into Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Of course, Sri Ramakrishna scolded him. He said, shame on you. I thought you will be like a great banyan tree under whose shade uh, millions of people who are scorched by the sufferings of worldliness, they will, they will come and find shade under you. And here you are thinking only about your mukti. Um, so the king asks the same question to the queen. Why don't you want to remain immersed in the bliss of samadhi? I want to remain immersed in the bliss of samadhi. But you are engaged in a mundane life, day-to-day -day life. The queen said, ah, I was waiting for you to ask this question. What is the, this is another step, a deeper secret. And then she so, shows that what you found in samadhi, Chidananda Rupa Shiboham, pure consciousness, bliss. That same reality is in the here, here. All these people, this palace, this administration, this, and these people, the problems in the world, they are all appearances of that same light. It is the same screen on which this movie is playing. You may withdraw from all of it. You may melt down all the ornaments into a shapeless mass of gold. Or you may let the ornaments remain as ornaments. Let the necklace remain as a necklace. Let the ring remain as a ring. Let the bangle remain as a bangle. But you know it is the same gold everywhere. Let the world remain as it is, instead of trying to disappear into samadhi. You engage with the world, whether with eyes open or with eyes closed, same reality. So that's a deeper realization. Sri Ramakrishna calls it Vigyana. After realizing Brahman, you see whatever you left behind, neti neti, look back, you see that is also nothing other than the same Brahman. Now, that is the story Sri Ramakrishna told M. If you don't have to give up uh, your house, your children and all of that, and your job, you remain here. Same Brahman everywhere. And that story was told by, this is the story of Vashishta telling Ramchandra, you want to give up the kingdom, why? It's like throwing away the ornaments. It's the same uh, gold is in the ornament, same God, same Brahman is in everything in the kingdom. Now, Sri Ramakrishna is saying everything has to be renounced here. And M is saying, but story, you told me that story. He is giving Sri Ramakrishna's story back to him. Yeah. Vashishta told Rama not to renounce. Now you are telling me to renounce? Now Sri Ramakrishna is modifying that story. He is adding footnote. M, Master. Sri Ramakrishna understands what is going on underneath. <laughs> so he smiles. He said, Vashishta said that to Rama, so that Rama may fulfill his destiny, that he will remain as the prince of Ayodhya, will go and fight with Ravana, you know, Sita will be abducted, then he will go to rescue Sita and fight with Ravana and destroy Ravana. That is the whole mission of the avatar of Ramchandra. And that's why Vashishta told him. Which means, actually, renunciation of the world is necessary. That's why. So this is the background. That's why you see the next, otherwise this next sentence is difficult to understand. M stood there like a log, stunned and speechless. Why would, what is, what is there to remain stunned and speechless? Because Sri Ramakrishna is stressing that no, 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 not world and God together, God and God alone. And world, yes, but only by seeing God in everything. Because one may become complacent. Oh, Sri Ramakrishna has given permission. I may do 50% of this and 50% of that and balance. And Swami Ashokanji says, 
little uh, nectar in one hand, little poison in the other hand. One sip of this and one sip of that. No. Yes, you can remain in samsara and that is perfectly all right. But the point is, one must renounce everything internally. And I'm holding on to God and God alone. Even in samsara also, I'm holding on to God alone. To realize God, one must internally become, the identity should be, I am a sadhaka. I am seeking God. I want God realization and nothing short of God realization. I don't want 50% God realization, 50% samsara. That's what Sri Ramakrishna is saying. Whether you are a monk or a householder, internal renunciation is necessary for both. Monk, internal and external. Householder, internal. Externally, one is in the middle of the world. All right. That's why M stood there stunned and speechless. So day has come, 10 o'clock, and they have gone back into the room. Now M asked the next question. I want to realize Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi. I, I, I know you are, it, you are a devotee of Ma Kali, all that is fine. But M was very inclined to Advaita Vedanta. So isn't there any way of realizing? You keep te telling me about Bhakti. <coughs> Notice, even in the Yoga Vashishta story, Vashishta and Ramachandra, the discussion is about realizing Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi. What we were discussing yesterday, 13th chapter in there in the Durga Bhati. So M says... What about that? I want to have that realization. And Sri Ramakrishna says, it's very difficult. And why is it difficult? Notice, he says, how much austerity they had to perform. They went out of their dwellings from morning till night. The rishis performed austerities and meditation. They, he says, they ate a little supper of fruit and roots. That means very austere life. Why? What were they doing? What is exactly the sadhana they were doing and why is it so difficult and how is it connected to Advaita Vedanta? He explains. You see, you cannot succeed in this if the mind is stained with worldliness even in the slightest degree. The mind must withdraw totally from its objects of form, taste, smell, touch and sound. Only thus does it become pure. See, the same consciousness. You are Brahman. You are consciousness. But through the medium of the mind, it flows out through thoughts. Even thoughts are not problematic. But the thoughts again flow out through the five doors of the five senses and contact the world. People and objects and activities and problems and temptations and anxieties. And then Brahman is hidden. You are that, but it's hidden now. Hidden by what? By the, the thoughts of the mind, by the sense perceptions and by the world. So this is, this is shining so brightly that we don't realize what's behind it all. That Brahman is there. God is there all the time. And it's our own reality. But then what do you have to do? To empty the mind of worldliness. So this emptying the mind of worldliness, he says all this austerity, complete, complete simplified life and turning inwards in meditation. Then he says pure mind is the same as pure Atman. So the mind, pure mind means... The mind withdrawn from, the senses withdrawn from the world, the mind withdrawn from the senses, and then the mind stilled. That is pure mind. Nirvishaya mana. Mind without vishaya. Pure mind is the same as pure Atman. But nirvishaya mana is equal to samadhi. Mind will become in, absorbed in samadhi. But such a mind must be altogether free from lust and gold. Only when it becomes pure, then one has the experience of God. God alone is the doer. This body, mind, even this individuality is the instrument. This becomes clear. Then he told, tells the story of that monk who was beaten and then he recovers consciousness. Somebody is feeding him milk. So they try to see that he has con concussion or not. Are you, do you recognize who is feeding you milk? Yes, the one who beat me is feeding, the same one who is feeding me milk. So they will think that he surely has concussion. <laughs> No, he has become, he's become enlightened. Uh, so he, he knows that it is the same reality everywhere. And M says, yes, yes, I know it. I heard the story. And see, again, Sri Ramakrishna corrects. Not enough to know it. See, your question is, I want to realize I am Brahman. And here is a serious mistake. See, the, uh, the obstacle is, I read the book, I do the analysis, and I understand it. And I feel I have known it. 
Then the sign that such a problem has come is people will ask, I have understood everything, Swamiji. Then what do I do next? What do I do next means you have not understood it yet. That's what Sri Ramakrishna says. It's not enough to know it. One must assimilate its meaning. Another place Sri Ramakrishna says, Katha gulo to bhalo, dharuna hava chai. The words in Vedanta are good. His, the discussion was about Advaita Vedanta. Words are good. They are true. But one must assimilate it. It is not for nothing that so many sadhakas do so much tapasya. If there were such a straight cut, you know, we say shortcut, direct path. You are Brahman. Here, realize it. If it was so easy, then why would where are the fools that they did so much tapasya? It is necessary. It is necessary in order to be stabilized in that. But even before becoming stabilized, one may get a glimpse. A glimpse is possible. Not only glimpse, even samadhi is possible long before that. Sri Ramakrishna says, there is another kind of samadhi called unmana samadhi. One attains it by suddenly gathering the dispersed mind. Here we are. And there is a process. It can one can guide others to it. One I did a like a private retreat and we did an exercise. Vedanta class slowly, and then after that, we did a meditation exercise. So at least some of them. We are ordinary people. If an extraordinary teacher, an extraordinary student leads to samadhi and realization. But at our level, but some people, they, one person said, Swamiji, did you hypnotize us? What happened at that time? We were all stunned into silence. It can happen. But that is not enough. That is not enough. Um, if the teacher is very powerful and the students are prepared, then one can have a direct samadhi, a glimpse. Uh, of, of the infinite. Um, Swami Vivekananda in Belurmat, once he was sitting under a bale tree. There, that tree is the mango tree. That tree is still there. And talking to the disciples, gathered people who had come to visit him. Uh, uh, and uh, early morning. And the talk about God realization came. Swami Vivekananda is impatient. He wants to realize God now. Do it now. Be realized. You want to realize Brahman? See, here is Brahman. Here. Just like showing the gold ornaments and saying, look, here is gold. And the moment he said, look, here is Brahman, say Brahman. And the people around him, their minds became absorbed. Their description is a great stillness descended on the courtyard. And to different degrees, Swami Premananda, Babudam Maharaj, who was the manager of the Belurumat, disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, he used to do the morning worship of Sri Ramakrishna. He had come down. Puja Thali, this plate of chandan, fruits, flowers and all. After doing the worship, he would go to the Ganga and do worship of Ganga there. So he was coming down. Puja Thali in his hands and walking down. He was not part of the conversation. He just overheard Swami Vivekananda say to the, all the gathered people there in the courtyard, you want to see Brahman? Here is Brahman. Here is the ultimate reality. See Brahman. Here. And Swami Premananda went into Samadhi. He just stood. The description is so amazing. He stood there like a picture. One foot raised to take the next step, frozen. With the puja thali in his hand. Absolutely. His face glowing and eyes inward. Uh, samadhi. And the whole scene remained like that for a few minutes. Swami Vivekananda saw, noticed. And then he said, Babu Ram Dai Bacha. We go. And then Swami Premananda, who was frozen, one foot in front of the other, he started walking again. If such a thing can happen. Sri Ramakrishna says, Unmana Samadhi. Instantly one can disappear into Samadhi. And then, notice these things. He says to M, you understand what that is, don't you? Because M already has that experience. He says, M says, yes, sir. I understand. But then he says, it's not enough. It is a sudden withdrawal of the dispersed mind to the idea. And that samadhi does not last long. Why does it not last long? Because deep samskaras, worldly samskaras are there in the mind. So they force the mind out again into the world. He gives the example of the mongoose he had seen in his village in Kamarpukur. So mongoose remains in the hole and very snug and comfortable. But some naughty boys had tied it. Mongoose has a long bushy tail. So the <laughs> naughty boys had tried to tie the brick to its tail, and the mongoose would fall out of the hole, sometimes jump into it and try to stay in the hole, but the weight would pull him down. 
Similarly, we may, with an effort, be absorbed. A few of us, with the grace of God, even in an instant samadhi we can, by the grace of the Guru, or if not that much, at least a deep silence, which is extraordinary, we can be absorbed. It can be done, almost for everybody. But it's not enough. We will come back again out of it. And uh, it, But it's not bad also. It's a wonderful thing. It gives you a glimpse of the truth. And imagine, even deeper, even higher than that is possible. And someone who is established in that, all the time they are in that state. Or even beyond which we don't understand. What an amazing life it will be. What a blessing it will be for that person and for everybody else around. To lift the mind into such peace, joy, love, um, give peace to everybody. So let me stop here.